Thank you, Survivor. But the vampire's in another coffin. Vampire survivors. <laughs> oh, boy. This thing. Um, This is a lot of fun. I don't really know how to explain it. I'd heard a decent amount of praise for this. I hadn't really gotten a clear explanation of what it actually is. And so I'm going to try and do that. Um, it is it is a little bit tricky. The first thing I'll say is it's a lot of fun. I've sunk quite a few hours into this, and especially considering how cheap this is. I, I don't normally dwell on price, but I'll actually bring it up right off the bat. This is a $5 game that I have gotten way more enjoyment than I've gotten out of a lot of $60 games and sunk a lot more time into it. Um, this is this is just a great time. So, uh, have you ever, well, you probably have. Have you ever encountered ads for those mobile games where, like, you're just kind of moving around the screen and you're just being hoarded, usually by zombies, and, like, your character starts out with some weapon to keep them away, like, I don't know, a shotgun or a pistol or a katana or something, and you, you upgrade it as the swarm gets bigger, and there's always either a really horribly acted uh, voiceover, supposedly, of a player, or there's an AI-generated voice that's, you know, describing the gameplay. Like, OMG, I can't believe I got this far, and all that kind of nonsense. And it even kind of looks fun, but if you ever try them, it's absolutely not worth it because whatever fun there is to be had is buried under a mountain of monetization and ads built into the game. Well, imagine one of those with all the BS cut out. And so that fun that is in there can just shine. Because this game is very simple. You have your character. You start in a big open area. I'm not going to say there's no, like, landmarks or structure. Like, there is. Some levels are more focused on being vertical. Some more horizontal. Some are more generally open. And there are, like, things dotted around a certain amount of distance. North, south, east, west. But, like, for the most part, it's practically a blank canvas space. And you just deal with hordes and hordes of increasingly powerful enemies who you take down with your starting weapon, you level up, you upgrade that, or you get new weapons, or you get new perks, and you do your best to survive as long as you can. Well, up to a half hour, basically. Because uh, once you hit a, a half hour, un unless you've unlocked an endless mode, which you'll get a bit later into the game, until you've unlocked that, um, once you hit the half hour, death literally shows up and goes, okay, we're done with this, which is basically the game admitting, yeah, you could do this forever at this point. We're just going to stop you. But that escalating sense of these things closing in on you as you try and fend them off, or if you think they're going to be too much for you, as you try and weave carefully through the ones coming at you and different ones have a different amount of strength. There are elite ones. There are boss monsters that show up for a little bit. Can you take it down? Will you get the uh, the extra good stuff that you'll get if you can take it down? If you can beat it, it'll help you survive, but it might also be the death of you. Do you have to chip away at it? Are you powerful enough to go head to head? Um, all of your weapons are just, once you get it, it just fires automatically in whatever pattern it fires in. Um, and it's just on a cooldown. And you can get various things to, like shorten the cooldown, make it more powerful, make it have a make it cover a wider area, all this kind of stuff. It's very, very simple, and it's really addicting. And I can definitely see why a lot of my mobile games have loaded these up with ads and microtransactions, because it is addicting gameplay. But to, to play something that offers everything that is normally gated off behind BS for these kinds of games, and just gives it to you for the cover price of five bucks, yeah, yeah, that means I can just sink into the addictive nature of this game, and I know at no point is it going to ask me for another penny of my money. Why don't more games do this? It's really good. It is so fun, and the visual aesthetic is very Castlevania, and when I say very Castlevania, I mean I'm kind of shocked that Konami has not come at them 
for the designs of some of these uh, both playable characters and enemies. Like, the very first playable character you start with is basically a Belmont. He's wielding a whip. And they literally have the bone dragons uh, show up in this. I mean, like, I'm sure there are technically differences between this and the design of the bone dragons from Castlevania, but, like, super evocative of that. So if you have a, a if that's going to give you a little extra thrill, thrill if you like Castlevania which I do. Um yeah, that's a bonus. And there's so much to unlock. And you start unlocking stuff so fast, but there's so much. So I haven't unlocked everything. I have gotten every achievement. That took me about the 40 hours. Um I haven't unlocked everything because there's a handful of secret characters that I have not unlocked yet. Um, but I've unlocked most of what this game has. There are dozens of characters to play as. There are five standard stages, but then there's a bunch of bonus stages that work in different ways. I mentioned you can set up an endless mode. Um, you can also do uh, like an inverted mode for greater challenge. There's there's all this stuff. And then as you go, you can unlock all these things to make your characters more powerful right from the start to make it easier. And so like you're getting further every time until you beat that stage and then you unlock the next one and then you get a new character and you try that and they start with a different default weapon. And ooh, I don't even have that as a weapon that I can get. Oh, now that I've used them for a while, that weapon is now added to the rotation of things that I could pick up and get over the course of the game in any given run it's it is an excessive abundance of content again for a very simple game but it gives you so much for the fairly limited kind of gameplay this actually is it offers you so much of it it's quite impressive and as a bonus and I'll I'll say this as a as a fan of them. Uh James Stephanie Sterling, aka Commander Sterling, um, of the Jim Quisition or the Podquisition podcast, writes the lore. So once you unlock the the uh, bestiary, you start going through that. And you don't have to. This is not a lore heavy game. There isn't really a plot to this. Not really. But if you want to read the lore. It's it's uh it's inventive. It's good for a laugh. Props to you. That's that's that is real good work, Steph. Uh it's uh it's, it's it's just fun. It's ridiculous, it's excessive, it's simple, it's addictive, it's rewarding. I I just it's one of those games that is so cheap that I can't think of too many people I wouldn't recommend just trying it. Because once you pay your upfront cost, it's not going to pull any nonsense. And like I said, it's the style of game that you're used to seeing nothing but nonsense. And instead, you just get the game. <laughs> Vampire Survivors. Have you played it? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon's what pays the bills, allows me to do this as my living. I uh, played this briefly on Twitch. I'm not sure it's the best game for streaming, but I sunk plenty of time into it uh, on my own. But uh, even if you can't uh, support me on the Patreon, uh, there is the Twitch and there's other links to other things below that you can follow me on as well. Even if you can't do that, like, share, subscribe, help me out also. But don't worry too much about it. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can come on back. Next time you need a break. End of the video, so I gotta shout out my top patrons. Robin Moore, Zubin Mutfulla, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B, Angus Bjarnason, Melinda Walters, Imudelki, Leotha Boyd, Katoria, Toy Loli, Becky Sparks, Renobulax the Poodle, Zach, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Tim Price, Adam R.D.L. Taylor, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. Thanks for your support. If you want to he hear me probably mispronounce your name as well, check out the rewards on the Patreon. How you doing there?